Hello and welcome to the second lecture on categorical propositions. In this lecture, we will be talking about the distribution of terms in categorical propositions. Now, what is distribution? If you see distribution, if, if, if you understand distribution, the concept of distribution, distribution basically talks about whether the term which we are talking about or which we are concerned about is taken in its entire denotation or not. Now, what does it mean when we say that whether a term has been taken in its entire denotation or is representing uh, entirely? <clears throat> now, let, let us take like A type of proposition, which is of the type all S is P. We know now that A or universal affirmative proposition, this is basically a universal affirmative proposition. So universal prop uh, affirmative proposition, which is of the type all S is P. When we say all S is P, whether the term S is distributed and whether the term P is distributed. Now, a very simple way, a very, you can see the definition of uh, distribution in your uh, book, uh, in many textbooks, you know, also it's everywhere on the internet and so on. But uh, there is one proposition where people or students find initially some difficulty in understanding that why this term is distributed or why this term is not distributed. So we will discuss, but we'll start with the simple one. That is uh, A, that is universal affirmative proposition. Now universal affirmative proposition says that all S is P. Now whether the term S is distributed or whether the term P is distributed or whether both are distributed or whether both are not distributed. Now as I told you, what is distribution? Distribution is basically that whether the term which we are talking about, like S or P, are taken in its entire denotation. When I say all S is P, do I mean all S? Yes, there is absolutely no doubt about it. Yes, we talk about all S. But do we talk about all P's? Now, let's take a simple example to understand. If I say all goats are mammals, I know that I am talking about all goats, right? But am I talking about all animals? Oh, sorry, all mammals? Right? So it precisely says that when we talk about universal affirmative proposition, the subject term is distributed, however the predicate term is not distributed. So this is the understanding. Let us take universal negative proposition E, which is expressed as no S is P. Right? So no S is P is given to us. Now let us try to understand. When we talk, uh, now, initially there can be a confusion over here because uh, um, some students sometimes give a very uh, difficult and different answer in this case. Now, when I talk about no SSP, right? So, what do I talk about? Uh, am I talking about all S? Mm, I'm talking about all S. So, people will say that no, I'm not talking about all S. In fact, I'm negating this understanding. But when I say no S is P, right? So it clearly says that we are very clearly saying that we are talking about all S and we are talking about all P's and we know that there is no commonality. Like suppose if we draw Euler diagrams, basic Euler diagrams. So all S is P will be represented like this. This is the set S and this will be the set P, right? So I'm talking about all the S, but I'm not talking about all the P. That is the understanding. When I talk about no SSP, this is the set S, this is the set P, and when I say no SSP, I also say no P is S. Logically, these are equivalent expressions. We will talk about it later in the course as well. So, like, suppose there is an understanding, there is something which you need to understand. When I say no SSP, what I mean to say is that I know that none of the S are P's. I, in fact, I also state that none of the P's are S as well, but that comes naturally to us uh, or uh, even if you do not understand logic, still we will understand that uh, if there is uh, no S which is P, then there is no P which will be S as well. So that understanding is very clear, right? So we are taking uh, S as well as P in its entire denotation, right? So that is the understanding that when I talk about no S is P, I say, like suppose if I say no uh, people from Gujarat are people from Maharashtra, right? So if I say like this, so what I mean to say is that the people of Gujarat and the people of uh, Maharashtra are disjoint. And I'm talking about each and every person of uh, Gujarat and each and every person of Maharashtra, right? So that is the understanding which you need to 
uh, develop rather than since it is stated with no so i am not talking about those things i am in fact talking about and i am talking about in its entire denotation right so that is the understanding uh, particular affirmative proposition right so this will be i the representation is some s is p right some s is p am i talking about all s definitely not but am i talking about all p's then also it's not the case right because if we again draw simple euler diagrams so it will be like this s p and we are basically talking about this part right so this part we are talking about right so i am talking about some s definitely but not all i am also talking about some p but not all right so if i need to say some s is p so i am not taking s or p in its entire denotation so here as i told you that all or both the terms were distributed here none of the terms are distributed because neither i am talking about all s nor i am talking about all p right so it's not the question about assertion it's also not the question about denial it's about whether the term is taken in its entire denotation that is the idea or that is the uh, meaning of distribution which should be kept in mind <clears throat> last particular negative proposition o oh, some s is not p now you can pause the video here and check what is your answer which term is distributed and which term is not distributed if you see the basic euler diagram it will be like this this will be s this will be p and we are talking about something like this right so this is the idea which i am talking about right so whether we are talking about all s or whether we are talking about all p's now try to understand when i say you can pause the video and see whether uh, which term is distributed or which term is not distributed or both the terms are not distributed or both the terms are distributed all these things you can check right or you can think and therefore i am asking you to pause the video and uh, check but coming to the answer what will be the answer of it that how you need to understand that which term is distributed and which term is not distributed when i say some s is not p so definitely i am not taking the term s in its entire denotation because i am talking about some s right so when i am talking about some s definitely i am not talking about all the s's so in both these cases it is very easy to understand that this term is not distributed and let us talk about this term whether it is distributed or it is not distributed now when i say some s is not p like suppose if i say that some students of this class are uh, not from uh, say maharashtra suppose right so i am taking a bunch of students of this class that i know that these four students are not from maharashtra now what i need to clarify with this either i can understand that from where these students are from so that can be one of the exercises but if you see logically what will be the thing that i know the list of students from maharashtra and these four students or five student or one student whom i am talking about is not in their list like look there is a list method we call it the list method when i say all s is p i will come to this again let us try to understand when i say all s is p i know this list and i know that this is the part of this list right so i can always say that all s is p because if i um, know this list and it is a part of this list i know completely this list right so this is the understanding when i say no ssp so i know about this list and i know about this list and they are completely disjoint when i say some ssp i need not know about this list fully i also need not know about this list fully if there is an intersection of at least one element so i will say yes some ssp when i say some s is not p i know at least one of one or two things which are outside this completely if you see these euler diagrams these are basically euler diagrams if you know these are not venn diagrams right we will talk about venn diagrams in detail in this course these are basically euler diagrams <clears throat> here i was taking this in its entire denotation i was not talking about this in its entire denotation here i took both in its entire denotation here i was only concerned about this part so neither s nor p 
was taken in its entire denotation. When I say some S is not P, I am talking about this, the exclusion of this in its entirety, right? So when I talk about some S is not P, what I mean to say is that P is completely excluded from some part of the S, right? So this completely exclusion or complete exclusion of S is stated in this statement and therefore this term is distributed, right? So it may feel a little bit counterintuitive. Some students do feel that it is a little bit counterintuitive. Intu intuitive. Some students also feel about this that it is also counterintuitive that how can you say that no S is P is uh, in uh, this S and P both are distributed. But try to understand. The question is not about if I use the word all or the question is not also about if I use the word no or some. The question is about whether the terms, the subject term or the predicate term are taken in its entire denotation. Whether we are talking about all of them or whether we are taking only part of them. If you are talking, talking about all of them, if it is possible uh, to, it is impossible, suppose if it is impossible to uh, talk about uh, or without talking about all of them, we cannot find the answer. So definitely that term will be distributed. However, if we can take a part of it and take a part of it and say that some SSP, so definitely it is not uh, impossible for us to take them in its entire denotation. Now we can take the parts of it and then also we can solve it. And here in this case, this part has to be taken in its entire denotation to claim that uh, this part of S is not there in this whole part of P. So that was the understanding which I wanted to clarify. In fact, for an introductory course, the maximum which you need to understand is that which term is distributed and which term is not distributed in AEIO. Now, uh, I will make another uh, small chart to give you a revision of this. Uh, <clears throat> and this is going to be a little bit uh, interesting. If you see, if we talk about the universals, right, uh, universal and particulars, right? So we have two universal propositions, right? So A and uh, E and we have particular propositions I and O, right? So and if we talk about affirmative propositions, and we talk about negative propositions. So it will be like this. I may uh, draw them a little bit over here. So this will be there and this will be there. Now this is uh, the understanding. Now if you see affirmative propositions. Now if, 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 if you ask which term is distributed and which term is not distributed. So you know here the term S is distributed. Here no term is distributed, here S and P both are distributed, here S is not distributed but P is distributed, here both are not distributed, here P is not distributed. So if I draw it like this, now you need to read between the lines. If you see what is common in affirmative propositions, the common thing about affirmative propositions is they do not distribute their predicate terms. What is common in negative propositions? In negative propositions, you will see that they distribute their predicate terms. This is the commonality. If you talk about universal propositions, what is common? They distribute their subject terms. What is common in particular propositions? They do not distribute their subject terms, right? So given this understanding also, you can uh, uh, have a very uh, nice understanding. And sometimes it is also uh, asked in examinations that uh, universal propositions does this or it does not uh, uh, do something and um, you need to think so um, this thinking is not going to be very difficult but then you need to understand that there are certain commonalities in universal propositions particular propositions affirmative propositions and negative propositions and you need to grasp that as well right so this was about categorical propositions and distributions uh, in the next lecture what we will do, we will understand the Venn diagrams of these terms and how they will be used in a later stage. Thank you.